Okay, shall we get started? I hope everyone can hear me um, on Zoom also. Um, how are all of you? How's it going? How was the midterm? Mm. Could have been better. Could have been better. Could have been better. Fixing that Gaussian distribution. Mm -hmm. oh, which problem are we talking about? Oh, oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. No, so so do 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 not do not worry. So like I uh, I was I I think I have a feeling like you know most of you have done quite well, and and this was a harder uh, midterm compared to last year. And I could actually, I actually felt the last one, year's one was a bit too easy, like uh, sort of, and and it could have been, it could have done more. Yeah. You disagree, okay? Um, but um, so don't worry, don't worry. It's it, I know actually, I think we've we've done a lot actually so, so far, especially for like an introductory course in machine learning. Like you know, we've covered a lot of topics. We've gone quite in depth into some of them, which was great. Um, and. Uh, and of course, we haven't covered everything, but but this is a course that's meant to be very broad. It's meant to kind of like take you from linear regression all the way to uh, kernel kind of machine support vector machines and neural networks. So, so for example, like uh, we will be doing like we're finishing reinforcement learning today and doing neural networks next week. Um, but but there will be more courses. I'm not worried about neural networks because there will be m many other courses you can take even afterwards. Uh, and uh, that, that you can uh, to go more in depth into neural networks, for example, and other other topics. But I, I'm actually very happy with with what we've done so far, and 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 with with, with all of you. So, so I'm very proud of all of you so far. So. I know it's like really really like difficult for the video because you know when it'll be like very very hard. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be doing the grading. I haven't started yet. I think I'll start. Uh, so honestly, I think I'll start af after the course ends. I'll be doing it in the week, uh, the week after after all the lectures uh, are finalized. So, so I won't, yeah, I won't do it now. Um, so I'll, I'll keep you updated, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll let you know. But I, I think in in the week following that, with the, the grades should be out. Yeah, by the end of that week. So, so, so we fin uh, our last lecture is next Thursday. So a, a week later, tw towards the end of that week, we, sh we should have the grades. Yeah. Um, um yeah so um if, if people have if any if anyone from zoom also has questions feel free to type them on the chat i can see your chat here and uh or, or even uh, unmute yourself um, but but type them it might be easier to type them on the chat um yeah um extra credit for assignment five <laughs> Uh, I think it's difficult. I don't know how to do that. Well, in a sense, because because now we kind of set the grades, so I don't know if I can. Uh, Let's talk a bit after the class. Let's talk a bit about after the class because I, I, I'm. But, but you're saying to increase the weight, the the amount of marks in uh, in yeah, that assignment. Um, you could have like the assignment. Um, no, so so I think I, I get it. How I can modify Canvas to to do that, but I'm wondering because we kind of uh, set the marks from the beginning, and and I'm I'm wondering if it might not be unfair, uh, might be unfair for other students if we sort of like reweight the marks now towards the end. Everyone would be happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I I okay. I I I, w I won't mind. I won't mind if you want more weights on assignment five. It it will be covering these last topics on uh, RL and the neural networks. And we had to redo it because last year's assignment five was on fairness, and uh, and it, because it was taught by uh, by Yang Liu who. Who does research on fairness? I've never done research on fairness, so I decided not to teach that. Sorry, uh, machine learning fairness. 
It's um, a little bit, um, Leilani has touched a bit on that uh, last time, but um, yeah, um, but 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 it, uh, last year with the Yang Li went into much more depth. They went into much more depth into into those, and it was just fairness, not robustness. And um, Leilani was speaking still more about robustness than than fairness. So anyway, we, we had to, we we redoing assignment five basically. Uh, from that's what. Ah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Now now I'm with you. Okay. Okay. Extra credit. Uh huh. Uh huh. So so should should I increase it from like twelve points to have to have what twenty points, yeah. for example? Yeah. But I have to take from somewhere else in that case. But basically, the idea yeah. is that it's optional for you if you want to do extra work and get extra credit. Otherwise, you can choose not to do extra work and get the same credit as if you just. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm up for that. I'm I'm up for that. I'm up for that. So yeah, we can we can do extra credit. I uh, have to. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll uh, yeah. Got it, and got other it. other times you'll like really got test it. the difficulty and then come back down. Got it, got it, got it. So like a good like extra one just to like counteract the like difficulty that is involved. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. We'll do that. Um, um, how uh, and in general, I just want to get a bit of a feel. How how many questions did you manage to finish sort of in the midterm? Did you manage to? To finish all of them, or kind of seven out of eight, six out of eight. I feel like I, I checked around got like six yeah. out of eight, and uh -huh. kind of touched a little, like did one bit of seven and eight. Of seven and eight, yeah, yeah. That's 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 very good. That's very good. So yeah, I this is uh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably like five parts throughout the entire, like you know, like four A or four, like stuff like that. Like everything was like yeah, small yeah. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. The big issue was like there's a lot of math that we have to do for certain problems, like the decision tree one. Right. We have a lot of n sub d calculators doing. Right, so right, like right. Doing that. Like you didn't have the time to do the calculator. Yeah, so I was like mashing my calculator to like try to get. Yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah. I just yeah. really can't for numbers yeah. that take yeah. too long because I couldn't. Yeah. Triple check my numbers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So in, initially, I was I was thinking about. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about maybe whether to drop some exercises because I, I knew it was a bit on the longer side, but then I decided to actually still keep them because um, just to kind of help you focus on them and, and not encourage you to search on the internet or the, or the, the other things, for example. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so um, it, it was, I'm, I'm not worried, it was, you know, it's, it's gonna be fine. I, I can, I can uh, do some curving. Hi. <laughs> um, Great. Okay. Uh, all right. So, so just uh, the 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 main announcement for for today is that uh, so I I've, I've announced also I sent an email last night. We won't have any lecture this coming Thursday. It's Thanksgiving. Um, so my understanding is that when when there's holidays that the university observes, we we shouldn't have lectures, right? Yeah. So so it's, this is this is the federal holiday. So it's not just me. It's everyone. Uh, yeah, the, entire uh, the entire school won't have. Okay. Um, yeah, so we won't have lectures. So we'll have this lecture and two more next uh, next week. Um, so so today uh, I definitely want us to finish reinforcement learning and and hope to start a bit into new networks. Um, and we'll continue the next times. And and I don't know. Uh, I think we might have a bit of time, like towards the end of the yeah next week, to have some kind of discussion or to go in a special topic of your choice. Um, we can maybe talk a bit more about that next week when in, in on Tuesday and maybe think about if there's something you want to, a, a paper we'd like us to discuss or a topic in machine learning you, yeah, if you'd like us to go through. Okay, um, sounds good. So l l I'll do a bit of, let, let's see a bit, a bit of a reminder of what we've been doing now two weeks ago. So, so we were talking about, I'm going back now, so so we were talking about reinforcement learning, about these robots and how they can do all kinds of things. Um, so you remember th this, you remember these animations, how, how robots can run in a simulator, sorry, this one, how they can run in a simulator and how they, that simulating environment can be deployed in the real world. 
Um, we saw how our robot lives in a stochastic world that is, that is, that is deterministic. No, it's not deterministic, it's actually stochastic. So every time the robot makes a move, it can go with some probability in a different, uh, end up in a different state instead. We define our uh, Markov decision process, which is uh, defined by a set of state actions, transition function T, reward function R, and a start state. So this is a transition function T from go starting from state S by taking action A, and then going to state S prime, landing in state S prime as a result. So we saw these. Um, we saw the Markov property, which again, Markov property says that uh, our um, process does not depend on the past. It only depends on the present. So, so only the present is what matters. Only the present state, uh, ST, is what and action T matters, not, not the past ones. Um, and then... So I'll skip this. Just this is just a quick recap. We talked about utilities of uh, actions and sequences, and how sometimes um, some rewards have lower utility when they later late on discounted into the future. You see, by this discounted utility, we discounted by gamma because they happen later into the future. Oh, we'll get them much later, and so on. So this is infinite utilities. And then we saw the Bellman equations, which. Um, which define the, um, which tell us how we can compute the optimal value of a particular state by doing these, uh, these by doing these equations, this this fixed point equations. We basically said the, the optimal value of state S is a maximum over all the actions. And over, so uh, so, so you take the best action so that maximizes your expected future reward this is the, c the 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 reward of landing afterwards after action a in state s prime plus the discounted utility or the discounted value sorry of being in that uh, in that state s prime so we uh, we take the optimal action that maximizes this ex future um expected future utility uh, future value sorry um yeah This was, uh, so why is it better to learn Q instead of V? And this was an ex a, a, a question in the midterm, right? Um, the reason why is because um, for, for uh, when, when you have a, when you do just value iteration, you, um, and let me see how to best explain this. Um, It's about the policy. It's about when you do value iteration, you have to still do a maximization over all the actions. Um, when you do Q, uh, Q iteration, you, um, um, so ba basically, let me, no, let, let me rephrase. When you do just value iteration, see here, you, you find the optimal values in in your uh, in your game but but you, you still don't have a policy here you still don't have it doesn't tell you uh, th these are just values of the state but you don't know at, at each state where you have to go what is the best like you know uh, like policy that you have to take valuation does not give you a policy you still have to find it afterwards when you do a q q it q, uh, q value iteration with the then you also get a policy as a result you get both values and policy so that's the reason why it's it's better Am I missing something, uh, Fatih? And no. what is that? Yeah. So, so you um, you you also get the policy when you do the Q value iteration. When you do the Q iteration, so so because these um, yes, this also optimizes over the actions. You get you get both the S and and A as well. You map both uh, both the state and the action, so you get both the value and the policy. Let me do that. Um, so we, we showed you the example with the value iteration. So we went through it. Uh, in, initially, we have uh, we have uh, this this is the value value of, of one in the target state minus one in the in the bad state, and and we update all these states. We do we do one by one. Initially, all these. Um, only this one changes its value, but e even though um, 
we, we still try to update all these other ones, but it's just because the, the genes ones are still zero, they don't change their values. But over time, they end up changing uh, their value and, and, conver and eventually converging. So, so here we have, again, we have a value uh, iteration, but we still have to compute a policy afterwards. Uh, so, um, and this is what, uh, what, what will be, uh, yeah, what, what, um, so, so then what, um, so in general, uh, as, as we were saying in, uh, in value iteration, you, you don't have, a, you, you try to maximize over all these actions that you could take. Um, and this is, is, this is in general difficult, especially the set of actions is very large, but with, 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 with policy, uh, with, when you have a policy, you simply do what that policy says. So a policy says at, e at each, in each step in each square what is the optimal action you have to take to um, um, to, to 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 complete your um, to, to, to the game so and of course we, we define uh, utilities for uh, for these uh, for these fixed policies so so we define uh, now um, we, we can define the the value under uh, of, a, of a particular state now under a particular policy pi so this is the uh, this uh, uh, this would be the expected total discounted rewards uh, by starting in the particular state s and following pi following policy pi so this would be um so as opposed to uh, what we we're doing before now we're just following that policy we don't maximize over all the actions and do that optimization we just follow the particular policy which and the particular policy here would just say instead of trying to try uh, maximize over all the actions, just take one of them, and it's telling you which which one you will you will take. Um, and again, we also get the same kind of equation uh, for uh, when we do this under a policy. Now instead of instead of an action A, now we have for the policy pi of s, but it's otherwise the same. Um, So again, the idea is that we, we it's very simple. We simply um, um, modify the Berman update and we can still compute the values under a fixed policy. Uh, the, the same values are now under the policy pi. Um, and so I'm skipping this. So one, one um, problem we have with, with, the, with policy iteration, of course, is that um, you can sort of like you know keep following that policy and and you, then you can optimize these values under a fixed policy but sometimes the how do we know the right policy how do we get it in the first place um this is a problem like how do we arrive at the optimal policy in the first place and and one way to do it is to is to also update the policy so we, so we can we can try to do this approach where we optimize the policy and and the values of each state and and we can alternate between the two of them so so this is called policy iteration. So we, 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 we iterate between uh, policy evaluation, where we have the policy fixed, and we just go through the, uh, and opt update the values of those states under the policy. And then uh, we also do policy improvements. So we take that policy and, and, and update it, basically. We update, uh, we, we try to see, oh, what, uh, is, is it better to do a different action instead uh, for a particular state? And, and we update these. Um, and, and, and often what people do is that um, generally they do more steps of the first one, of the policy evaluation, because that's, uh, that, that you can do faster and converges much faster. It converges much faster, but, but this one um, converges much slower. So, um, so generally, you, yeah, uh, you generally alternate between them until, until it converges. Um, um, yeah, so... So this is the same thing as before. This, so these are the, the equations, basically how you do um, uh, uh, policy evaluation. So here we update the values, and this is we update the policies. So the the value of a state at, at under policy pi uh, at iteration i plus one is updated with the Berman equation. So you see here uh, um, the policy pi k is fixed. Pi k is up, appears here and here and here, and it's all it is fixed in this step. We just update the values 
uh, to, from vi, we go to vi plus one. Whereas in the second equation, we update the policy. So uh, pi k, uh, instead of from pi k here, we go to pi k plus one. So, so we update the, the policy and we keep iterating between these two. Um, so this is an example with a, with a like, um, imagine you have a two slot machines um, and you're in a casino and you're trying to like, you know, play, uh, play the slot machines. So one, one, uh, one is a red one, one is a blue one sometimes. And, and you don't know in practice what is the underlying mechanism of the slot machine. Sometimes they can um, um, give you yeah, m more wins and more loses. And, and they, they, are, they are often biased because the casino is trying to make money. So sometimes, you know, they, 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 and they're not going to be 50-50 all the time. They might be biased towards um, one way or another. So, so the idea is generally that you can model this in a markup decision state. Uh, so here you have the two states, the winning and the losing. You have probabilities from going from one state to another state or stay in the same state and, and the rewards you have. Um, and you can, of course, still model this game as an MDP, as a markup decision process, and you can optimize it. Um, um, you can optimize it and, and, and apply these uh, yeah, value iteration, policy iteration. Um, but um, don't look too much at the details because uh, the, the, the key thing, what I'm trying to show here is that in practice, you actually don't know the probabilities. The, the, key, the key idea here is that you actually don't know in practice these probabilities of uh, jumping from one state to another. So, so actually what you often have is something like this, where you kind of sometimes you can observe the rewards, but you don't know what's the probability of going from, from winning state to a lose state and so on, uh, from winning to losing. So, so this makes it very difficult in a reinforcement learning when we don't know these probabilities, the, these transition uh, functions. How do we how do we do the learning when we don't know where we're going to end up in? Um, so, so this is the um, this is the idea of interaction uh, of of interacting with the environment. Sometimes when you don't know um, when you don't know the transition probabilities and how the where the environment will take you, you just have to interact with it and basically like learn along the way. So. Um, so an important idea in reinforcement learning is this idea of exploration versus exploitation. So sometimes you, in the exploration phase, you just explore the environment and you start, for example, learning these transition probabilities that you don't know. And after you start learning them, then you kind of, then you end up exploiting. So then, then you essentially exploit and just try to win as many rewards as you can. So, um, Yes. So, so this is this is these are the two key ideas. They are then they use a lot in reinforcement learning, in agent-based learning, and and so on. So, um, and um, so I so I spoke about this, and I'll skip this slide. So let me see. Uh, come. And I'll skip this as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm skipping this as well. So reinforcement learning. Um, yeah. So, so the 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 the, the key thing that we're which which we're trying to get to is to make this more realistic. We don't know the transition uh, uh, model T or the rewards R, and we're trying to learn them along the way. So this is this is where we like you know th this is where more sophisticated like, RL or more realistic RL actually happens. So we 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 don't also know. T and R, and we're trying to learn them. So, so how do we do that? So let's see. Um, let, let, let's see on this toy example. So, so you don't know the transitions T. So this is a, remember this is the transition of the the probability of starting in state S, taking action A, and landing in S prime. We don't know in which state we could land after we take an action from a state, and we also don't know the rewards R. Um, but you are given a policy. We are given a policy pi. So our goal is to learn the state values. And, and what do we do? So what the, the, the general idea is that we learn along the way. So we, we, we take various actions and we learn along the way um, this, this particular, uh, these two models, this T and R. So, um, 
let me see I'm skipping this yeah so one way to do this is by counting so how do one, one way we can learn these these uh, these um, probabilities is by by counting the the, the experiences so um, so let me um, so 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 now we so first of all now we're in this setting so we are that in the setting that v that, that the value iteration now uh, depends on t and r and both these t's and r's you see i put hats here because um they are unknown now we're trying to also learn them so 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 one way to do uh, to do this learning is called model free learning so in model free learning what what we do is that for example we want to compute an expectation of a function uh, expression value over f of x which is which is uh, this formula so sum over x of p of x times f of x and 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 there's two ways one of them is model based learning so in model based learning what we do is that we 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 get we observe samples x from from p of x from, from the true probability of x and then we we build a model of the distribution of p of x so so imagine if x is a discrete uh, variable so x is from 1 to 10 for example then then we just build a model what's the probability of observing x equals 1 or 2 up to 10 so uh, this p of x will have 10 elements and we do this by counting we do by count we count how many samples x landed in that particular bin 1 2 up to 10 for example and then to compute the expectation over f of x we simply use the model the probabilistic model we we estimated so you see th this p hat is the estimated probability model P, this this is the true unknown model that we don't know. We don't know this one. We don't know this this true p. We're trying to estimate it with this one, so with the p hat. So we we approximate the expected value over f of x as as the sum over uh, p of x uh, f of x. But now p uh, p uh, this is p hat. This is the estimated um, probabilistic model of over x. And and we, uh, however, th this, this is different from model free learning, where we basically just observe samples x from p of x, xi from p of x, and, and we take the, it could be the expect expected value over f of x as a sum over f of x size. So we compute a sum over all these f of x size, and, um, and, we, and we take the average of them. Um, uh, I see there's some questions on the, on the Zoom. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll get to them shortly. Um, th th does this make sense on the slide so far? Do, do, do you, does anyone have any questions? Yeah? This makes sense? Um, so let's see, the, so, so we have two questions on Zoom. Can we have the answer for the midterm? Um, uh, I... I think so. I think so. Uh, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll, 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 let me speak to the TAs. But yeah, I, I let me get back on that. I uh, um, let me see the second one. So I, I'm sorry, I could not hear the logistic properly. Can you please sum up? I just sent her. You sent her. Oh, okay. Okay. Great. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah. So. So th this is clear, right? Is this clear? Okay. Um, so, so this is also another example of how um, how you could do this. Like, I imagine, for example, you you want to compute the expected age of all these Santa Cruz students. So, so, so what what you ob what you want to do is to uh, to compute the expected value over 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 this variable, these, these ages, which is like compute like this. So, so 35%, for example, of the students have age 20 and so on. You could, we do like that. So with model-based, you simply co compute the proportions. Like you estimate the proportions of students at a particular age. 25% have age 18, 35% uh, have age 20, and so on. And then you do the expected value. With the model-free, you simply take uh, samples of students. So you take students with the different ages and then you just sum up uh, uh, to take the average of the ages and that's the model free version and the idea here is that these 
samples come with the right probabilities. When you sample the students, they will come with the right probabilities from this probability distribution P of A. And that's why this works, because you can just take the, you know, the ages um, across the sample and, and sum them up and, and average them. <coughs> um, one important um, notion um, when, when we talk about averaging with in our discounted case, when we have discounted the utilities, is that we have to, when we take these samples, these rewards, let's say these axes will be the rewards uh, that our robot picks up in, in RL, we have to discount them by these factors, one minus alpha, one minus alpha squared, and so on. And then we, we so we put these weights, and then we divide by the sum of the over total sum of all the weights. And uh, this is how we compute the exponential moving average. So, so it's an it's a, it's a it's a weighted average that that goes that yeah it goes all the way to to the very beginning, uh, or 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 in the future if you if you plan if you plan to yeah uh, compute the values, um, and, and and one nice very nice property about it is that it has this this very nice property called the running average, which which basically means that if you Add, if you had an older, uh, th this is your average so far up until observation n minus one. If you add another observation, you don't have to recompute this whole thing. You just do an update like this, where you do you multiply the previous average with y minus alpha, and then you add a new data point, and you just weighted by alpha. And this this has a nice property, so you don't have to recalculate this whole thing again from scratch when you do this, this, this exponential discounting. Um, so, um, yeah, so, um, so, so here an, 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 another important concept in, in RL is this idea of Monte Carlo. So how do we, how do we learn, remember, how do we learn those unknown uh, functions that uh, function T and, and, and R, and the transition function and the reward function. So one way we can do it is we can use Monte Carlo. So um, so the idea is that we um, we just take many samples um, and 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 we, and we explore the the path of, uh, of the, the the tree basically of the, of the MDP and and then we update the the, the states uh, this way and and we update the rewards uh, with the rewards that we observe. So so this is. Um, this would be the idea of a Monte Carlo. So we uh, we have a policy that we initialized. Uh, we have uh, v is an arbit uh, with this, this like value function, and we generate an episode using yeah using using the policy pi, and then we um, from this episode we, we go down the tree and then we return the rewards and and we store them and that's how we estimate the the value function uh, by taking the average over the returns. Um, so, so here again, we uh, we need to do this because we don't know the the true rewards. We just observe samples from the rewards. Uh, the, the R from the f f given our previous uh, setting was yeah was um, was unknown. So this this R here. So here's how it works. So so you we have the Bellman equation under policy pi for the for this for the value state we take samples so 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 we are in a particular state s we follow policy pi and then we end up in different states we take multiple samples for example of of that and then we end up in multiple states s1 prime s2 prime and sk prime these are the uh, states we end up in so what, what we have samples we have rewards uh, from each samples and also different uh, discounted values into into the next step um, once we are in these new states so these are our samples and finally the the new value is simply the average of the over this these samples so this is um this is a model free uh, approach um, so so you see, so 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 we are trying to do exactly this, but with with the model free, it, sim it simply comes to this, because we don't have we, we don't need to have a a, mo a model of the transition distribution. We just take samples. We just uh, try different actions repeatedly and and see where what's the state we end up in. Um, 
Um, and, and another key idea is uh, in, in our is called this uh, temporal difference learning. And temporal difference learning um, is basically just as before, um, but now we, we make use of that, of that uh, running average that we were introducing earlier. So, so the way we update V, so instead of, instead of summing over all the samples, now we keep track of the V uh, from the previous, uh, from all the previous samples and, and just we add the, the extra sample. And we use the running average that we were showing earlier of how you don't have to recompute the whole fraction from uh, the beginning, you just add the new sample and, and add it, add it to, the, to the current estimate of the, of the value function. Is this clear? Uh, yeah, question. <laughs> How many samples do we need? Um, yeah, so I think in general, like, um, you, you, you need to look into convergence, but how, how many, so, so how many, how, uh, you will take samples into convergence. You, you, you sample one at a time, and every time you, you take a sample, you will be end up in, an, in a new state, basically. Um, you, you run, you, you do these, these, um, these actions. So, so you're, you're a robot, like, you know, you, you take some action, for example, and you end up in a new state. So you, so it, that, that's a sample and you add it to your, to your value function under that particular policy. Um, and, and you do this, you, you do take as many samples up until V, uh, the, this value, value converges. Uh, the, va the value under pi converges. It will depend on different, uh, on depending on application, it the, 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 the number of samples would be very different. Yes, so generally you do this until convergence. So you don't think in general the number of samples. For some applications you'll have, uh, you won't need too many samples, where for other applications you need a lot of samples. Uh, yeah. Uh. So this is a visualization of, of, for example, of policy iteration, Monte Carlo, and temporal difference. So in policy iteration, we uh, again we were maximizing over all the possible. So we start in the particular state S, we take um, a particular action A, and then we end up in another state, for example, S prime or S, uh, S, S t plus one or this one, and so on. So so in policy iteration, we were maximizing over all the actions we could take. In Monte Carlo, we, we generate an episode like this up until we reach um, a terminal state. Whereas in temporal difference learning, we, um, we simply um, um, do one step, one step look ahead, and, uh, and, we, um, and we update with that running average. So that's another way to visualize, uh, visualize them like this. Um, so that's another example of, uh, yeah, of uh, f a policy iteration, for example, on this on this particular uh, graph, we so what we do here we we have the value under policy pi. So so if, if, you, if you look here, this is the value under policy pi at at uh, state one one. So one one is here, and this is with the, with the temporal difference learning. Uh, we, we, this is the value, uh, the previous value that, that you had so far um, that you weight with one minus alpha, and then you add pl uh, an alpha pl uh, times the reward from uh, being in state one, one, going up and then ending up in one, two, plus the, ga uh, plus ga uh, the discounted future value of ending up in one, two. So that gives you, for example, minus 0 0.5. So the, and what happened here is that we had the, 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 so the policy was telling us to go up from this particular state, and this is how we update it. Uh, so we, we just take the current estimate of, of the value under that policy pi, we weighted with one minus alpha, and then we added we add this, th these other terms, and we weight them by alpha. Forget about these for now. Just yeah, just look at that. Yeah.
This one? No, no, in that rectangle of left. In this one? Yeah, because V11 means that only you have the same length. It should have gotten out. Oh, this one? Yeah, this one. Ah, this is the uh, this is just the initialization. Initially, so you initialize them all, for example, to zero. Okay. Uh, you start start with uh, so so you have you have a policy here. The setting is you have a fixed policy like this one, and you initialize the values to zero of the state to zero, and then uh, you update them like this with temporal difference learning. Um, so you have uh, the, the the value states under the say under the policy pi. And pi is uh, this policy shown here. You start, uh, they start with zero, zero, and you update them. But um, again, the, the key thing is that the up, this update is this term. Is how this update is a is a, is a is a weighted average between the previous value function and the new sort of like yeah uh, reward that you get and the, dis the discounted uh, feature. Yeah, so. So we won't do that sum anymore over all the possible actions and uh, that we can land in and so on. Um, so yes, so um, again, the, the, the problem is that uh, with temporal difference learn value learning is that we still <coughs> estimate values here under a fixed policy. And that policy could be suboptimal, for example. Then we would have to, again, come back to the policy and uh, once we computed the new values, like change the policy based on the new values, and then go back, uh, update the values many times, then change the policy again. So, so, so the idea is that to do this much better, we do the, up the iterations over the Q states, the Q values directly. So, so we do the same type of learning, same, uh, same temporal difference learning, but now over Q states. And with Q states, we have both. We, have both, we can both uh, get values and, and optimal policy. And this, um, and this, uh, this has been, a Q, Q learning has been uh, the state of the art in reinforcement learning for some time. So, so this, this, this has been like, you know, for many years, the, the, the best way to, to do reinforcement learning. So this, is, so this is how, how it works. So, so for, again, for this, this is the update that we saw earlier for, for the Q state. So, so the optimal, so the, you can interpret this as the optimal value of being in state S and taking action A. And I don't know how to call it, but it's some kind of like, yeah. So I don't, I don't want you to confuse it with value because, it, because it's, it's, it's a Q value, let's say. And this is theoretically, it's a sum over all the possible states we can land in times the, the reward we gather from landing in the state times the discounted uh, future Q value. Um, and we can do this uh, with samples. We just take a sample and with a sample, we just get one estimate of this, of this uh, um, reward inside the brackets, yes. I know someone asked this bit earlier about the question on the notion, which is why yeah. we use learning over uh, value yeah, because um, because you get you get um, um, look, look at this key. It has to, it, it, it's it's a function over two arguments over states and actions. Mm -hmm. So you get uh, for each state, you can look at all the actions and and select what is like you already have the Q values, for example, and you take the maximal Q value. That, for example, and then you can get the, the optimum policy. Mm -hmm. You can see what. Um, wh what is the, uh, among uh, all the actions, what, which ones have the highest Q value mm -hmm. for this particular state? So you have it right away pre-computed, you have it already computed when you do these iterations, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Uh, so, and then compared to value iteration, which doesn't give us the optimal action, right? It just gives us the value for the state. It gives you the value, yes. So, so value iteration, so here, let's look back again. Sometimes it, it's, so for this grid world, it's not too hard to get the possible, uh, let me show you. Uh, it's a lot to go back to. Oh, here, so, so this is, th these are just values here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't tell you where to go. So you, you can sort of like, for, for each square, you can go and sort of like 
yeah, uh, compute this. You can look at the, all the adjacent cells and say like, oh, so for this square, it's th th this, so this, this, so this is the best. we have to calculate axis first, and then we have to look again at all our decisions and we'll make a decision, right? This star relation where it's a pure learning total. Yes. We can write out the data. Yes. And we don't have to do any additional calculations. Say that again, say that again. So we did, we've done so 100 iterations of value iteration yeah. here, and it's given us these values. So if you're at one, w the bottom left corner, yeah. we would still have to do a check to see which yeah, because you have, you have yeah, yeah, exactly. Which action? Which action? Like, uh, oh, okay. you have to check. Oh, is the, the, what about the? the have to go to all the, all the adjacent to squares and see which one has the highest value, and that's that will be that will give you a policy. I but see. now imagine if you had, um, if the space of actions wasn't four, because here you can take only four actions. Mm -hmm. But if it was uh, a million, for example, then it's a lot. To then then it, then, it's, then it's a lot. To so a lot of computation. If you had a million actions, you could take, for example. Mm -hmm. I see. But um, you're just maximizing size. Yeah, and yeah. Steering the computation. Yeah. So it just tells you right at the next iteration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and you can c think of it like, for example, the aesthetics. Like, for example, the game of Go has, I think, at each step you can take something like a node of almost like hundreds of actions. Like, mm -hmm. you know, because you have hundreds of like places on that on that board where you can place a new thing you know, a new one of those pawns so that, that, that the action space at each step at each, the action <coughs> space is quite large it's like hundreds mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah yeah okay with the with the with q learning you optimize, you get both. You get both the values and the, uh, and the actions. You, you get. Do yeah. uh, here? Uh, here, you, do, you, you, you actually don't have any policy here. You just do value iteration. Um, oh. You just, um, because here you, let's go back. You maximize over all the actions. That, that's, that's why you, uh, it, it's kind of implicit. Like, you know, you look at all the, the maximum, but you, yeah. Okay. Was it? Uh, yeah, it was here. So you see, so so now we we estimate both at the same time, both this, you know the, the these values over actions as well. We get we get policies and we get uh, values too. We get a policy because we get we have the actions here. It's it's already computed. Um, um, yes, and 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 you can uh, include this, of course. You can use the same running average trick, and again we would update the queues as the weighted average between the previous queues for that particular state and the new sample and you weight the sample with weight alpha and and again it, it, people have been shown that q learning is really really good q learning is was uh, and has still is state of the art for for these problems um, and and uh, and if and if you explore long enough uh you will converge and and the other really really interesting thing is that it doesn't even you don't even have to follow the policy the optimal policy actually you, you, over time you start conver uh, converging to learning the optimal policy but you don't even have to follow it you can sometimes take actions that d are not optimal but just to sort of like learn more about the environment and this way like e even if you know the, uh, this action won't be optimal you still take it just to kind of learn more about the environment but you still keep your policy. Uh, as the, the optimal policy estimate as it is. So, um, so this is the idea what we're talking about, like off policy learning. You learn the optimal policy without following it actually. So, so if you know, for example, that the, you start from this state and in this state, this will be the optimal policy like this, you can still take another path. Um, and this way you explore, you actually explore even more the environment um, but but your estimate of the optimal policy doesn't change. You still know that this was the optimal path to go from uh, big, from state from start to finish. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so so what th what this example is showing is that you don't have. So I'm repeating this again. You, you, what this example is showing is that even if you know the optimal policy, you don't have to follow it. So so this was the optimal policy, but you, you can choose to not follow it to take a different route instead to take. So so here the robot took this path. It went up uh, alongside th that went and down. So but Q learning still works. That's what I'm trying to say. So even if you do this, and if you do those updates with Q learning, it will still be absolutely fine. Actually, it will, it will do nothing. Nothing would would be affected by doing that. You will still have this as the optimal po uh, optimal policy. You would actually get even more um, better estimates in these regions because you you're exploring more of the environment. Would that take a couple more iterations? That might be a bit slower. Yes, okay. yes, but it depends. So it's still but it could. It, but it comes. To, this comes to the exploration versus exploitation uh, idea dilemma. Like sometimes you you could find that. Maybe your previous estimate of this region was wrong, and actually there's more rewards along the way here, for example, or or something, or maybe it's faster to go, or that or that kind of stuff. So then, if you try that and you realize, oh, actually, like you thought it was a, a longer road, but it's actually faster, then you th that can lead to an update on the policy. So then you instead of th this will be disappeared and the red will become that one. So. Um, but the algorithm, the, you don't have to change anything. Like the, it's the same update, the same equations, uh, and everything will work out. So. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm skipping this. Um, yeah, and that's that's it. Uh, let me see what time it is. Um, Let's let's take a um, eight minute break and then we'll do a quiz and we'll start the neural networks.
Trying to check with the AUC regulations. I was thinking of starting after we finish, uh, do it even in the week day after yeah. we finish the lecture, like in, in the final week. Mm -hmm. I think of doing it then after the uh, mm -hmm. um, and I won't. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. That is because I was thinking of using that week, the taking the that week to do that. Uh, otherwise, yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, we can we can uh, change that. We can extend it. Um, let, let's talk uh, afterwards. Let's yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah. How are we doing with time? Shall we get started? Yeah, so maybe we should wait maybe uh, one or two more minutes for people on Zoom, because I said eight minutes for the break. Yeah, let's give a couple of three more minutes, because um, people on Zoom might be in their home. So, so regarding the assignments, we'll uh, release it soon. But uh, we're, we're still finalizing some things, but we'll still release it soon. And um, yeah, yeah, and we'll discuss about the, those weightings. Yeah, changing the yeah the marks. Yeah, we have 45 people on Zoom, so. So for those of you on Zoom, uh, can you join the quiz? Um, if you can hear me. I've also posted on the chat. Yes, perfect. Um, but we'll be starting soon. Okay, shall we get started? Is everyone ready? Yeah. yeah, okay. Three, two, one, let's go. So this is will be in, in reinforcement learning. Mm. 
can you see the picture? I don't know why it doesn't show on my. Oh, here. Yeah, it's. So, starting state B, what is the optimal policy? Draw arrows in the boxes. 13 seconds. Four seconds. Three, two, one. It's, it's tricky. Uh, okay. Um, so starting in state, because it, it was tricky because I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was trying to show the picture just uh, empty without anything, but I couldn't see how a zoom view shows this. Responses view shows this shows this. Uh, but but anyway, this was this was empty, no arrow. So so you you had this state had a reward of one. This one had a reward of ten, and you start in state D. And what was the optimal policy? Um, and um, And yes, so th th this is correct. So you go like that towards ten, because there is no, there is, uh, yeah, there is no discounting here. Uh, this is correct. Th this, this path would assume you start from state A here and go all the way to E. So, so, but we were starting in state D. So, that's why it's. Um, so this one. What, what about this one? Why is this one? Yeah. What? 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 What's this answer is saying that we in state D you go to E. Um, I also thought the same. I thought you could get all the yeah. possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you were doing evaluation and you had some values here, and that may suggest that from an earlier age you could do this, right? Yeah. So yeah. Say if you're in D, you're going to C, but you're here, you're going to yeah. C. Yeah. In what, in, under what conditions would this be a valid policy? With a, an optimal policy. Uh, so, so this uh, so for the people on Zoom, let me put this cursor. So, under what conditions would this answer be uh, an optimal policy? When the weights are the same. The rewards are the same. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, that's a that's a good answer. Yes, when when the rewards are the same. Yeah, yeah. Or when there's a cost per move. Yeah. Um, yes, exactly. So <coughs> when there's a cost per move, or when the when if this instead of having a one, this would have had a reward of ten, yeah, equal or like something like that. Or um, yes. So th these are correct. Uh, this one. Uh, no. So so this one is missing uh, the other. Uh, the other two squares here. Uh, so a policy in general, a policy should have answers, should have actions for all the states. So for example, this would be an incomplete policy because it, well, it would tell you just what you do in this state, but not in the other two. Um, yeah, nice. So same for this, this. Um, so again, so this, this, this will be assuming you start for if we want to go to 10 and mm, so no that, that's not correct okay uh next question but one thing i sh I, sh I guess i should have said in this question i should have been a bit more specific also about what are the sort of like you know transition functions what are the you know t what are the rewards but but the rewards you have them here anyway ne uh, let's move on next question ready uh, three two So you have the same problem as before, but now you have a discount factor of g equals 0 
13 seconds. 10 seconds. Four, three, two, one. All player responses, yes, yes. Oh, so I can go like this one by one, okay. So, yes, yeah, so, um, so now we had the discount factor, right, of 0 0.1. So, um, so again, the, the, this answer is missing the, uh, the uh, a policy should have, should be four, should, for example, should have decisions for every state, even for state B and for state C, not just for D. Um, Yes, so, um, so so in D now you go to, to 1, in B and C you go to 10. Um, so, for, so, so this, is, this is correct, for example. So, so this, um, uh, because, because of the discounting now, uh, 10 will be discounted if you start from state D, or if you make one step you discount to by 0 0.1 then zero point, this becomes 0 0.01, this becomes 0 0.001 multiplied by 10. So that's, and that, that becomes lower than one, so that's, yeah, um, well, that's why. Well, wouldn't that the rain also give you um, 0.1 because of discount factor? Yeah, but it's, um, I think it's still higher than, um, than the other one, no? Um, if you, 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.001 multiplied by 10 will be yeah. 0 0.01. So it's still lower than 0 0.1. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so th this, yes, this is correct. So, so now for D, so you see, as opposed to before, now when, when the previous answer with D was still going that way because we had no discounting, now for D, we, it's, it's better to go to 1 instead of 10. Um, yes. So this this isn't correct because if you start from uh, from C here, then from this state in the middle, you're equally um, th th it's the same distance two steps away from going to ten or to one, and it's better to get a ten. Um, and I think now we have a uh, yes, and now uh, th so th this answer gave us also an example for when we start in state C. Uh, now, because the uh, question was also saying, uh, what if, yeah, uh, what if you do the same for starting state C? Um, so if we start in state C with green, we get, um, we, we still go to the left and, um, yeah, uh, is that, yeah, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think it's correct. It's the same policy. Um, why are they not showing? Oh. Anyway, okay, so it's all clear, right? Okay, uh, final question. Let's see. Responses are you like that? Okay, final question. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is happening? Um, So you have to match um, those numbers from the paragraph with the concepts. Which, which one is the transition function? Which one is the reward function? Which one is the policy?
I need to fit that on the screen. Okay. Forty seconds left. So, um, so is is it clear? You have to match those mm -hmm. sentences with these concepts. With which one is the reward? Which one is the transition function? Which one is the value under the policy? Which one is the discount factor gamma? Um, and keep it. This is also the equation you have. Um, Okay. Yeah, let me see the uh, let me see the results. Uh, what does this mean? Wait, really? But because it, it's like it's one of those. Uh, I never tried this type of question before. We have to match. So, huh. I, I think it's saying so. Like for part four, twenty-eight people got a raise, and part two, twenty-seven got people. Like so more really? people can have poetry three times more. Though. I don't know. Huh. Uh, well, I, I think it's saying the number of people that were correct per. Oh, because I think uh, oh the, the the answers were shuffled. Oh right. So uh, I, I hope you got them shuffled, right? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, the, the quiz was meant to shuffle them. Uh. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, they, uh, they were shuffled. They were shuffled. For question view, so. Gosh, it's hard to, because I don't know how to f zoom up. Oh, oh. Uh, but now it's too small. Uh. Well, OK, let's see. So, so part one is stating that there's reward at certain stages. Yeah, let, 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 me, let me try to bring, because I put it in here. So let's see if we can find a way to show this. Because oh, I want to also show the equation. So, OK, so, so what is it saying? So uh, while the robot is hungry, in certain places in the maze, scrappy where it's working, there's various amounts of food, i.e. all the electronics, its favorite dish. So what does that sentence mean? In certain places, there are various amounts of food. Um, what is it talking about? Food is our reward. Food is the reward. If we get yes. With food, we're yeah. Food yeah. Rewarded. Exactly. So that's the reward. So, so food number one, is, is the reward function R. The reward of being in state S, uh, under policy I land into S prime. That will be like the food at a particular location in the maze. That's the reward. However, Wally's electronics are faulty, so every time it goes forward, it only works with probability zero point eight. What is that? The transition. The transition, yes. Yes, so that's, so number we have a two. Point a and chance of going yeah. 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 So that is the transition function. The transition of being in state S and landing in state S prime by taking, a, by fo following a policy pi. Three. Um, Certain places in the maze are closer to the food items. What what does uh, what does that refer to? Certain places in the maze are closer to the food items. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, which one here? Which one of these? No. V V V is the Va the value, the value uh, of being in state S. So where you're in a maze, if you're close, uh, uh, close by to a food item, then then the value of that state is high. So the value of being in state S given policy pi. Right? Given policy pi, yeah, yeah. 
you can think of utility is like value but discounted because in utility you also discount the values uh, in the future because they happen much later in the future it's like um yeah yeah like that example i gave with money how like ten dollars now are worth more than ten dollars in in a year because of um, because yeah inflation for example and other things so having the utility you have to discount it if you get the reward into the future um, um, number four the food wally ate yesterday gets digested and used as a rate of, of 0 0.7 what is that what the discounting factor gamma yes so so if if wally ate yesterday it it got used to by zero so every, every day passes the food gets discounted by 0 0.7 that it had in pre in the past um five wally knows the path to get to a food place what is that the policy yes that's the path to go to a food place yes okay uh, great um so let's um i see i see some questions in the chat okay some comments in the chat all right um any any final questions before we move to deep learning about about rl Okay, so, so we'll start, I think we have, we have 10 minutes. So we'll, we'll start uh, introducing the deep learning and neural networks. Um, but we'll, of course, we'll continue uh, next time. Let me, let me put back my headphone for the people on Zoom. Yeah, so, um, so deep learning and artificial neural networks. So I suppose this is a topic of uh, particular importance for us in, in these uh, in this era, let's say, of machine learning, where in the last 10 years, deep learning and neural have been dominating the field. Have been, um, the, most of the state-of-the-art methods on many tasks are based on deep learning, are based on artificial neural networks. And um, so again, what I was saying, I think th this course was trying to give a broad overview of machine learning, not just focus on deep learning. And I think actually it's very important, especially because with deep learning, you'll have many other courses you can take you have a lot of materials online you can uh, you have you can do projects uh, based on that but i think it's very important particularly it was very important to cover all these other concepts you know uh, so far in the course but now that we're in deep learning so let's um let's get started so let me change the one second okay that, that looks good okay so so why what what are what 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 are these like concepts of deep learning what is deep learning what is uh, what is an artificial neural network and we um we have seen in the past in, in our previous lecture uh, lectures uh, the perceptron remember the perceptron right mm -hmm. the perceptron algorithm that that was modeling a single neuron uh, a single artificial neuron which was a weighted linear combination of its inputs these are the inputs axes if you look in the picture these are the weights and um and it, it applies a, um, an activation function. This this was the the perceptron that we had, and and what we'll see how like um, deep learning and, and neural networks are basically like you take a perceptron and, and and put many of them, stack many of them together in layers. So for example, like a, a, a standard multi-layer perceptron is basically this idea that you take this perceptron and and put many of them in a layer, like for example, like tens or hundreds of them in a layer, and then you have multiple layers, and you have connections like this going from one layer to the next layer. Um, and um, we, we'll also talk about convolutional neural networks, where instead of uh, um, doing this, like uh, these these weights and doing these one-to-one -one mappings, uh, what we actually have is uh, we apply at each layer we apply convolutions over images or over or even over one-dimensional uh, data, uh, you can also play convolution over one D, uh, not just two D. And um, and and finally, we'll 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 talk about uh, variational, not today, but next time, uh, uh, next next week, we'll talk about 
VAEs, variational autoencoders, uh, gen generative adversarial networks, and, and even deep reinforcement learning. So, um, so, so the idea deep learning is everywhere. So, so far it's, it's, it, 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 it happens uh, right now in every application that we have on our mobile phone. So for example, they can do object classification, if that is a, this is a cat or a dog, but not only object classification, they can do localization. So they can put a bounding box, the cat is here. Or for example, here the little, the little duck toy is, is in this particular corner. And this, this is not a, not a trivial task. This is not an easy task for a computer to do. Um, because for, for the computer, again, th these pictures are just millions of numbers of pixels. It, it doesn't understand what uh, these concepts are like uh, the way we do. So, so we have to uh, build these models that take those millions of uh, numbers from, for each pixel and, and, put, uh, and, and map to, to a label or, 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 ma or put these bounding boxes or even do segmentation. And segmentation means as you see here, that you label each pixel according to its class. So for example, all these pixels, which could be, again, like <coughs> half a million, for example, they are uh, corresponding to the dog class. And these are the pixels correspond to the cat and so on. And of course, it, it also like, um, deep learning is also, for example, in Siri. Uh, for example, you can, um, whenever you ask in Siri, what, uh, what, uh, what is the, uh, deep learning and so on, it, the, the sound recognition, uh, the voice recognition and, and how that, uh, how your answer comes back, that's all running with deep learning. It's, um, uh, deep learning models have been able to generate uh, images, new images of people from who don't even exist, so deep fakes. Uh, they can generate highly realistic images. Um, they, for example, they can do automatic translation. So here from a from one language, I don't know if this is a, yeah, I don't know what this language is, but it can translate to to uh, to the uh, to uh, the English language, for example, um, and they can do uh, yeah all kinds of like you know image uh, style transfer. What is this called? So so, so change uh, take this image and put it in a new style, like in the style of a, of a painting, for example, and so on. It can be used also for like, for self driving cars, for the game of Go. Uh, molecules, chemistry, biology, and and so on, and, and this is yes, biology and neuroscience. So, in all kinds of applications, um, it's everywhere. So, and and the, and the key um, conceptual uh, breakthrough uh, we had with deep learning was the fact that we didn't have to do the feature extraction ourselves manually. So, in in previous in previous methods, we were taking inputs and. And basically, we're extracting features, um, and then taking those features and putting them into a shallow model. For example, like a, like a, um, a support vector machine, for example, or um, or like a linear linear regression. Like, um, but but now with with deep uh, with a deep learning model, we can do all of these blocks in the same model. The model can also do feature extraction. It can also do the learning at the end and. Um, and, and the key idea was that uh, we do this in one model and let the model learn what are the features that it needs to extract without having to predefine these ourselves. And people realized that sometimes they were introducing sometimes maybe bottlenecks in these features. Maybe they were extracting the wrong features or they were not extracting enough features and so on. So there were some kind of bottlenecks when you try to handcraft these components too much. And by letting the deep learning model do it automatically, it was finding the optimal, sort of the optimal features to extract and 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 an optimal way to combine those inputs so that you can predict the output. Um, and the other key idea wi with why deep learning work was also because of the amount of data. We've been sort of like in the li since the mid two thousand onwards, there's been a, an explosion in the in the in the data we have available on the internet, for example, people have been posting lots of photos online. We have um, um, all this text we generate, for example, like the people, like like all these websites. Uh, Wikipedia, for example, is a good example of how, like you know, has been gr has grown a lot, and and there's a lot of data available. And 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 whereas all the learning algorithms, for example, eventually plateau, the the, the performance 
doesn't increase too much after we increase the amount of data. Um, with deep learning, this doesn't happen that much. And, um, and the reason why sometimes these older learning algorithms are plateaued was because they, for example, they would reach capacity. So um, they would have a, a certain capacity in the model that was being filled up. And even if you added more data, you were basically, you would be at capacity. So, so you, there would be no further improvements. Uh, but with the, again, with these deep learning models with like millions of parameters, sometimes even billions, then the learning uh, had, uh, the model had even more capacity even for the, the huge amounts of data. So, um, so th there's a concept of scale. So how, you know, you, you scale the model number of parameters and you scale also you, the data sets. And that's how you make more efficient learning. So, um, and they are inspired from neuroscience, uh, just as the perceptron was inspired from the model of a neuron. We have the same thing here. We have um, we have inspiration from from how the brain works and how each of these neurons send signals to other neurons, and they use uh, and and when the, when there's enough enough elect electrical impulses arriving at a neuron, then there's like you know, and a threshold is for example passed, and they sort of like you know activate, and then they spike and 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 this is and many of these concepts like activation function that is used for example like uh, and other things that are used in deep learning are coming from from biology and from neuroscience um, so this is uh, again uh, we start from a model of a biological neuron which has axons a cell body has dendrites it has a nucleus and impulses uh, axon terminus it has a um, it has a myelin sheath on this axon, which, which helps conduct electricity. So that's how the impulses travel. And, and, and we start building a, the model of an artificial neuron, inspired by this biological neuron, which, which as you've seen with the perceptron, and this was the, the example of the perceptron, we, we had several inputs, x's, to this neuron, x0, x1, x2, and we had weights. W0, W1, W2, and, and, and here we were calculating the, the weighted sum of the inputs. So we take the inputs and we weigh them by all these weights and we add a bias. And then we apply finally an activation function at F. And this, and, um, and for example, in, in the perceptron again, it was, it we were computing whether Y times X was big, uh, how that compared with zero, and if it was uh, greater than zero, below zero. So that, for example, the, this, this is, for example, what the, the, the activation function f was there. So here we can have different kinds of activation functions. Um, and let me see the time. Is that okay? So let, let's stop here, and we'll continue next time. I see there's a question on the on Zoom, so so we'll post this assignment five very soon, um, Matt. So um, we're, we're still finalizing it, and the reason why is we post, we've we've been late with posting it was because we changed it from last year. So so yeah, give us a yeah a bit of time and yeah. Um, yeah okay. You're welcome. Welcome. Hey, Mars. Hey, how's it going? How was the conference? It was great. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Yeah, it was like... Uh, uh, I, it was great. Like it was, it was a lot about like all these like uh, companies coming to like you know talk about like you know supercomputers and like you know like Intel and Nvidia, like AMD, all the usual suspects like Google, yeah. um, Intel, like and they were showing like supercomputers, like the latest graphics cards to train AI models to do all kinds of scientific simulations. Really? There were even like government agencies. It was yeah, yeah. in the US. Yeah, it was it was nice. Yeah.
do a lot of uh, research. No, well, it's Anouk as we have a course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's basically I have these next two weeks. It's uh, it's a preview for this course. However, mm -hmm. I might need a slight of some time with your help. Yeah. I've got it really done. I just need some time with you. You know, a lot of it is um, uh, optimization. Like, uh, like optimization. So you have these.